My name is Brandy. I am the owner and artist in Behind Brushed by Brandy. And this week we're going to be working on this piece behind me. It's this beautiful curvy chest. And I'm going to show you some of my failures along the way. So not everything you see on this video is going to be what we actually ended up with on the piece. Um, but I still think it's important to see the process that we go through. So the look I'm overall happy with, I, it just wasn't what I originally envisioned in my head. And that happens all the time. So I wanted to teach that that's a very normal part of any artistic process, including refinishing furniture. So um, we end up with a beautiful color scheme. Um, I'm going to feature the new lace transfer from the Dixie Bell Paint transfer line. This is their bells and whistle transfer line. This one's called lace. And this is the design here. It's gonna be perfect for the curvaceous lines of this piece match the curviness in this transfer. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this video, failures and all, and um, remember not to get frustrated with yourself because it happens. That was a rough day um, and you guys are gonna see it all. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, click that subscribe button if you like this video and every week you get something new on this channel. So um, you guys go ahead and give it a watch. Here's where I started out on this piece. It had an overall kind of brown finish. I found this on my local Facebook marketplace. And this piece actually sat in my um, unfinished inventory for quite a while and nobody noticed it. And then when I finished it, people went crazy for it. I always start my pieces by taking off the hardware and giving them a really good cleaning with Dixie Belle White Lightning. This is a time when I'm getting acquainted with my piece, finding any place where there might need any repairs and anything like that. This piece was in pretty good condition. I did go through and tighten all the drawer glides. They're metal drawer glides, so I just tightened all the screws. And then it just needed some sanding to even out some places where it had some chips in the existing finish. That was really the extent of my repairs here. And then I was able to go ahead and go in and start giving it a coat of Dixie Belle Slick Stick. Slick Stick is a gripping primer, and that's because this just had a slick finish on it um, that I wanted my paint to adhere a little bit better to. Here I am at the end of day one with my piece all repaired and a coat of slick stick. All right, I've got my slick stick on here. It's nice and dry. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my Dixie Bell sanding sponge and I'm just gonna give it a light sanding. Now this is not technically a required step, but I like to do this because it makes a tiny bit of difference in my finish. Um, just smoothing out that slick stick that I can feel in my final coat. And so where I feel this difference, if I rub my hand across it, I can feel the slight difference that that sanding makes. And now I'm going to take a damp cloth and I'm just going to tack off that dust. And now I've got a super smooth and clean surface to go ahead and lay my paint on. The color that I'm using is Dixie Belle Silk and the color is Serenity. I'm using my Dixie Belle um, Mini Angle, which is one of their synthetic brushes. And I load up my brush a little bit heavier with silk than I do with the regular chalk mineral paint. You're not gonna use water with this paint. And so you wanna make sure that you've got enough paint on your brush that it can glide all the way across your piece. Now I can lay my paint on any which direction that I want because I am gonna come back at the end of this coat and I'm gonna smooth those brush strokes out. So right now I just wanna get coverage on my piece and I'm working fairly quickly. Silk has a little bit shorter of an open time than the chalk mineral paint does. And because you don't want to extend it with water, um, you're using the moisture from the paint itself. All right, so I'm going to make sure I get my coverage all over the front of my drawer. Got a little speck right there I'm going to take off. Making sure I get it all around my moldings. And then the last step that I'll do, making sure that I've got some dampness on my brush, I don't want it too dry. I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna smooth out those brush strokes. I'm gonna run them all the way across the front of my drawer in a nice long linear stroke and I'm gonna clean up any excess on the edge of that molding on this side. And then same thing, I'm gonna come along all my drawer edges and clean up those brush strokes. This is just my first coat. This is going to require a second, but that will give me a nice smooth first coat in my Dixie Belle Silk. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add a top coat over this. Now, silk paint does not require a top coat. The reason I chose silk on this is because I wanna do a finish over it that um, is gonna add some interest. We're gonna use some powder glaze on here, 
but I wanted a nice smooth finish underneath. However, um, I'm gonna go ahead and seal myself with my Dixie Belle Gator Hide, and that is because I wanna be able to wipe back my um, um, powder glaze really easily. I only want it left in the very crevices. If I wanted a heavier look, I would probably leave a little more, um, or I would leave my silk unsealed. Silk is actually very wipeable, but because I wanna leave so little of it, I just want it in the crevices, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it just so I have an even more wipeable surface. Um, silk dries to a nice, really, you can see on this one here where it's nice and dry, it's a nice low sheen, a very matte sheen, and I wanna add a little bit of sheen so that I can scrub back that powder glaze and get the look that I'm after. So I'm just using my um, Dixie Belle Gator Hide sponge, the blue sponge, and I'm gonna dip it into my Gator Hide. This container is almost empty, so I'm just gonna take it right from the bottom of my container, and then I'm just going to wipe it all the way across my drawer fronts. And here is where this finish starts to go awry. Once my clear coat is nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and spray on my powder glaze, also known as breakaway glaze. Um, powder glaze is going to go on as a liquid and it's going to dry as a powder that you then buff away to leave this nice hazy look. I've done this before and I love the look of it. It just did not work on this piece. I'm spraying this with a tiny detail sprayer that I got from Harbor Freight hooked up to my air compressor. All right, you guys. <laughs> Um, I'm going to bear all struggles and everything with this piece. Um, it's a beautiful piece of furniture. I am not liking this product. It's really, really um, difficult to work with. And I understand there's a beautiful look that comes out of it, but I don't think this is going to be a product for me. So let me show you guys what I'm going through. Um, I sprayed the piece and this is what it looks like untouched. This is what it looks like after I've sprayed it. Um, I haven't done anything with this at all. So um, these red pads are what you normally use to scrub off the powder glaze. Let me show you um, how this works. So you would go at it like this and scrub it off. But you can see how much elbow grease this is taking. Okay, this would take an incredible amount of time. Now I could go around the entire piece. Um, I guess it's okay if you just wanna, if you wanna leave more of the powder glaze, but I wasn't thrilled with how this looked. It looked messy to me. So I brought out my surf prep sander and I put on a pad saver, which is this squishy pad here. And then I put on a piece of my um, red abrasive, the same thing to see if I could do this a little bit faster. Let me show you what that looks like. <laughs> I'm crazy about. So I tried next taking my surf prep sander and adding one of their foam abrasives, which is, um, this is a, what is this? Super fine. Same thing with my pad saver. And this worked a little bit better. I'll show you over here on this spot. <laughs> place for this look but I don't like this look <laughs> so this is a water-based product my decision here is I'm going to scrap this and I'm going to paint this and I think I could do better by this piece if I did a really pretty blend and used waxes to get the look that I'm after which is a very old vintage French look so lesson learned I tried something new it wasn't a success for me at all um, I think this look has a place. I've seen beautiful pieces done with it, but um, there's a lot of work involved in it. And I think I will get something that I'm happier with doing a different technique. Um, up here, I took a little bit of my paint and I just kind of dry brushed it over the top to kind of soften the edges. It still looks very messy to me. So I think I'm going to blend this out. I'm going to outline this with a darker paint and then I will use waxes. And that is a look that I'm really good at. Once I decided to scrap my old finish idea, I went ahead and went back to a clean base coat of Dixie Belle paint, and this time I used vintage duck egg. 
I decided to switch from silk paint over to vintage duck egg in the chalk mineral line and that's because at this point I've decided to switch to a blended finish and I love silk paint but it's not your best paint for blending. For my new and improved finish I'm going to go ahead and blend a coat of Dixie Belle paint in my vintage duck egg. In the center I'm using a highlight of drop cloth and then around the edges I'm shading with Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray. The Hurricane Gray just adds a really nice softness around the edges of the frames on these drawers and then I'm going to emphasize it with a little bit of waxes that's really going to bring it to the next level. This is a very subtle blend but I say this on all my pieces it's really a layering of the products that gives you the depth and dimension that you see in the final result. I always say when I'm blending that I need to first add paint onto my piece that I can work together. So I started out with my dominant color, in this case that's my vintage duck egg, and then I added a, just a little bit of my drop cloth to the center and I worked those two together. Once I had that blend done, I added my hurricane gray around the outside edges and then I worked that into my vintage duck egg. I'm always only working together two colors at a time. Here I am at the end of day four with a blended coat on my entire piece. Okay, on the side of this piece, I am going to add the lace transfer from Dixie Belle. So this is the new lace transfer, and it's this beautiful soft gray design, but it very much goes with the curviness of this chest and the vintage French feel that I'm going for with it. It almost looks like a really detailed stencil. So um, there's a couple steps I'm going to go to before I um, add this transfer on. This transfer comes in the package in four sheets, and so this is sheet number two. I've already got sheet number one on here. So when I am going to seam transfers together, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to cut off this very outer edge right up to the print line. I don't want to cut into the print line. I just want to reduce the little print halo that's around the edges. So halo, what I mean is that clear outline that's around the print of your transfer. I'm going to cut that off. So I like to always have a pair of scissors out when I'm doing a transfer. Um, I like to have out a pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife or a razor knife, um, the transfer tool that comes in the package. And then I'm also going to cut off this bottom layer of print too. And that's because I'm also going to seam this together down at the bottom with yet another sheet. This is going to take me three of the four sheets from this package to get down the side of my piece. So once I've got those cut off, that's what my transfer is going to look like. Now I'm going to dry place this on my piece so I get a rough idea what placement I want. I want to make sure that my pattern matches up from this piece up here to my next piece coming down. So that gives me a rough idea where my placement is going to be. Now I can separate the transfer from its backing sheet. All right, and that white sheet just gets discarded. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to line it up to my pattern all the way across. Once I have it lined up in a spot, I've got a little piece of debris right there. I don't want to get stuck. I have that part lined up and I just go very slow, making sure it lines up all the way across. All right, that looks good going all the way across. And then I will go ahead and just seat my transfer down into my piece. Now this piece does have some curvature to it and it's a flat transfer. So it's going to kind of want to so I come out from the center and press that down. Now I'm going to take my razor knife and this part here, which is left over on the edge, I'm just going to trim off. So I'm going to take my razor knife and I will just slice it right up to the back of my furniture piece. And then I just save this until I'm all the way done, making sure that I don't need any scraps for anything. I'll just set that aside. All right, over here where my piece is curved, I'm going to take my same razor knife and I'm just going to cut this clear sheet right up on that curve. All right, and this is what I got. And this is a little scrap as well. I won't even save that one. All right, and now I can start rubbing my transfer and I'm just gonna use the stick that comes in the package with the transfer. So I'm going to go over my entire transfer one time and then we'll come back and start separating it from the backing sheet. All right, now that I've gone over the entire thing one time, I'm gonna find a little loose corner right here, and I'm gonna start rubbing as I pull back my backing sheet. And the pulling back of the backing sheet is just going to help it separate from the transfer itself. I'm just watching the little pieces of the transfer as I go to make sure that they all stay with my furniture piece. 
So I have kind of this diagonal line right here that I'm watching as I go. I want to make sure that I don't rub onto my paint because I will leave little tarnish marks from this transfer tool on the paint. This lace transfer is more detailed than some of the Dixie Belle transfers. And so it's got a lot of little edges. It's gonna take a, a little more time. I would say one of these sheets in the lace transfer takes about 15 minutes to put on. So that's very normal. You wanna make sure you take your time and go slow with it. If I were to pull this clear backing sheet off right now, I would rip my transfer. But you can see how cutting those edges right there and then matching up that seam, this is where my seam is. And you cannot even tell that that is two pieces of a transfer that are coming together. I'm gonna finish rubbing this off and then we'll pull this backing sheet off together. So another way that can help get you your transfer off your backing sheet is sometimes you'll pick up an air bubble in your transfer, like this guy here. I've got a nice little air pocket here. I can, if I hold one edge of my transfer, I can take and push this air pocket and it will help start separating even more parts of my transfer if I can push that air in between the transfer and the backing sheet. You wanna catch that bubble and see how I'm catching the bubble and I'm pushing the air? That will help your transfer separate from the backing sheet. So if you have an air bubble, don't hesitate to hold one part of it, and then you can go ahead and rub that air out into other parts of your transfer and help it separate. Okay, I am to the very last section of this transfer, which is this last portion right here. My entire sheet is loose except for this one corner. And I'm just going to take this corner very slowly because as you get to the end, it's going to have a tendency on that very last piece to want to pull it off with the backing sheet. So I'm just going to take this last corner nice and slow. Pay attention to all my details as I go. Um, down here at the bottom, I'm going to rub it very carefully, making sure that I don't rub onto my paint. And then I'm just about ready to pull this backing sheet away from my transfer and have this piece completely attached. All right, and so my transfer is fully attached. Now, from here, what I like to do is go over all of my transfer with my fingers. And I'm just looking for any parts that might be raised or didn't get rubbed down all the way, and I will rub those out with my fingers. And that's because I can feel things with my fingers that I can't necessarily feel in the next step that I'm gonna do. All right, this one went on really nicely. So then I'm gonna take a piece of the Dixie Belle finishing pad, which is this little white abrasive right here. And I cut these in, this is a quarter of one, and I'm just going to rub it over. Okay, now that my transfer is nice and applied, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my Dixie Belle satin clear coat, and I've got a brush. I'm gonna go ahead and dampen my brush a little bit. I just use a little mist from my Mr. Bottle, work that little bit of water into the bristles so my brush is nice and damp. And I can go ahead and brush on a coat of satin clear coat right over my transfer. This is going to seal my transfer in so it's nice and protected. With this final step, it really makes the transfer look seamless with your furniture finish. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then my transfer will be nice and sealed. Um, and I just need to apply this one last piece down here at the bottom. All right, let's do our last bit of decoration to these drawers. So I'm going to take it from here, which is my basic painted finish, to this here. You can see how much it deepens um, the paint finish to add a little bit of waxes. So the waxes that we're going to be adding are Dixie Belle black wax and brown wax. And I'm going to be using a few um, small natural bristle artist brushes to add my wax. I've got four different sizes here. So I'm going to start off with a smaller size. Let's do this guy here, natural bristles. And I'm going to add my black wax and I'm just going to add it right in the crevices of this drawer molding. This is unsealed paint. I'm choosing to add this on unsealed paint because I want a little bit of it, more of it left behind. If you seal your paint first, that gives you more control to wipe it away. But in this case, I want it to be a little bit more natural on the raw paint. And so I'm just going to trace out all the sides of this corner drawer molding. All right, once that is nice and outlined, I'm going to take a slightly larger brush and I'm just going to smudge out those waxes. I'm working pretty hard, a lot of pressure on my bristles. 
And as I pull the waxes out from the corner, it's going to give it this sort of smudgy effect that you see here. Now, I've got a pretty outline there, but I wanna go ahead and soften that up. I'm going to take my Dixie Belle white wax, and that's because I've got a little bit of drop cloth on the centers here, and I'm gonna emphasize that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my white wax, very little on my brush, and I'm gonna use white wax on the center here. And that's gonna kinda of keep my dark waxes from darkening that area, even though I'm gonna introduce them into this area. I'm just working a small section at a time. I'll probably break this drawer into thirds since it's such a long drawer. All right, so there's a little bit of white wax in my center. And next I'm going to take another brush and a little bit of brown wax. And I'm going to use the brown wax to bridge the black into the white. So it's a little bit softer than the black, still darker than the white. And I'm just going to start working that brown wax up close to, I'm not gonna completely cover the area where the white wax is. And I'm gonna get it a little bit heavier, overlap some of this black in the corners. I like the look of the brown, it's nice and warm against the blue. All right, and then I'm gonna come back with my brush with my white wax on it. And I'm just going to sort of blend those two wax colors together so the edges are nice and soft. All right, I wanna pull this out a little bit further just to make sure it matches this drawer underneath. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that brown. And then I'm going to take my Dixie Gold Gilding Wax, which is this here. And I'm going to frame out this frame right here. Just This piece had a beautiful travertine marble top on it that I originally thought was going to have to be replaced because it had a couple chips in the edges. I decided to go ahead and try patching them. So what I did is I mixed together some Bondo and I went ahead and shaped the edges and then sanded them smooth to the curvature of my piece. Once my Bondo was all shaped, I used a base of Dixie Belle in Sandbar and then I lightly dabbed on some Dixie Belle Burlap and Hurricane Gray to match in the pattern of my stone. I wasn't 100% sure how this would look when I was done, but I figured if it had to be replaced to begin with, then at least trying this wouldn't hurt anything. I absolutely loved the coloring in this top, so I wanted to do what I could to try to save it at least before I decided to scrap it completely. Bondo is a nice, strong medium for rebuilding edges like this. I don't think I would use anything else. It's used on auto repair, um, and so I know that I can rely on it to last the duration of this stone top. The sandbar with the dabs of burlap in it was a really close match. I just needed to add a few darker spots, so I added in some Hurricane Gray. I rubbed them in with my finger and then added a little bit of water to just smear them out a bit. I taped off this area and I coated it in a high gloss spray paint so that it matches the sheen of the stone itself, and in the end you cannot even tell this repair was ever done. I'm going to make over this beautiful hardware, and it's really pretty, but I don't like this kind of orangey brown tint it has. So I'm going to take my Dixie Belle fluff and I'm just using an artist brush. I just filled my brush a little bit and I'm going to basically dry brush my hardware. Um, and I want it to kind of look like an old plaster hardware. Okay, and once I've got my dry brushing complete, this is what my hardware is gonna look like, front and back. And then my next step on this is going to be to seal it with a matte sealer. I'm just gonna use this Krylon Matte Chalky Finish Clear Sealer. Now I'm going to take one of my pieces of hardware that's already been sealed, and I'm gonna take a little bit of my um, Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax, and this is in grunge gray, and I'm going to go ahead and rub it into my crevices, and this is going to kind of gray up this hardware a little bit. Okay, and once I've got a pretty good coat of my gray wax, I'm going to take a cloth, and I'm just going to rub it off in most places. 
and it's going to leave it kind of down in the crevices looking a little bit like a dingy white. Just softens up that white nice. You can see that gray got down into the crevices. And so this is where I end up after that step here is with my hardware looking like this. Okay, and with my gray hardware, my last step is going to be a little bit of gold gilding wax. I'm just gonna dip my finger in my gold gilding wax, and I'm just gonna hit some of these very outer edges. Um, and that's just to tie in with some of the gold details that I have around the edge of my piece. With my full set of hardware nice and refinished, my final step on this is going to be to go ahead and just give it another spray of my clear matte sealer. My hardware is all made over. I did take the body of my piece outside before I put my hardware on and I sprayed it in a coat of Dixie Belle Gator Hide and now my piece is entirely complete. This piece turned out gorgeous. Despite the hiccups along the way, I'm thrilled with the outcome. My vision for this piece was to really play up the curves with a French inspiration, a little bit of aging, a little bit of gold, um, and I think it turned out perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button. You can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushedbybrandy.com.